My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Let's sing that again. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, we made strong in Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. You may be seated. Good morning. Look at this full house we got this morning. This is awesome, isn't it? That's because we got our sign up there and everybody knew it was Tim coming this morning. That's what it's all about. Woo! 
Right on. We've got lots of visitors in the house this morning. That's awesome to see. You are always welcome to come here and join our family. And for you regulars, you're welcome to come again and again and again. We love seeing you. It's amazing to see the house filled because I love this. We're going to quickly go through a couple of things in the bulletin because we've got a huge agenda this morning uh, with all the stuff, and we definitely do not want to cheat Tim out of what he has to say to us. I will let you read like I usually do most of it because I trust that you guys can read. But we will highlight a few things here, uh, just the families of the week, Ryan and Candice, and Jim and Crystal. We want to highlight those families. We want to pray for them. We want to pray for the Rick and for Rick and Heather and Sam Ministries. And I just like what Pansy Chapel wrote here for the Church of the Week. Pray that we grow in discerning God's voice and our love for others. Isn't that awesome? Learning how to discern God's voice. Prayer and praise. We need to pray for Margaret as she recovers from a medical procedure. And then I got an announcement from Carol and Rhonda, who we heard from last week as they're going on their announcement their mission trip to Jamaica, they are in need of a huge old suitcase that you do not need to have back. They want it for humanitarian efforts. Uh, they want to load it up and leave it there. So if you have an old suitcase kicking around that you do not need back, talk to Carol and Rhonda. Uh, for the youth, uh, you can disregard whatever announcements there is for the senior youth. You guys are going to Missions Fest, and you need to talk to Adam about Missions Fest there's a cost to that, so make sure you talk to Adam. He needs to know who's all going. He has to sign you up. I think other than that, I want to just re remind you guys, on Tuesday we have the annual meeting. And like I said, we have a video from Rick, so you don't want to miss it. Uh, I think it's really important this year that everyone is there. If you are a member, I would really like to say, you know what, come for an hour. It's going to be done in an hour. Other than that... I'd like to call up our speaker this morning. This is going to be awesome. I know Tim has really put a lot of thought and prayer and effort and time. I know there are parents on both sides that are here. I told Tim, don't let that make you nervous. That's your encouragement team. This guy's going to rock the house this morning. Would you guys join me in welcoming him? Morning. Well, let's pray. Lord God, I just want to thank you for this morning. I just want to thank you that uh, your house is full. Lord God, I pray that uh, the words you've laid on my heart, that you would just uh, put them on fertile soil. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and we just thank you that it is present here today. In your name, amen. So, this morning, um, it's going to be a little different than uh, your regular morning service because how many of you guys know Paul Harvey or heard of him? He always had a story in the morning and then he kind of leave you hanging. On the edge of your seat for the afternoon, the rest of the story. Well, I hope that I can keep you on the edge of your seat for my story. Because today I'm going to share my story. I'm going to share my testimony, which I've never done here before. First of all, I had to look up the meaning of testimony. And when I look in the Bible, every time the word testimony was used, it was a form of praise and honor to God. We honor God by sharing our testimony and what He's done in our lives. The second thing I found is we use our testimony to encourage others. It's an encouragement to others when they're going through tough times and we can share the tough times we've gone through and how God's been there for us. And it's those times that make us stronger. But then you must say, if I'm living right, the way I live my life is a testimony. Why do I have to share it? 
Well, God tells us to share it. He wants us to live it and to share it. 1 John 5.10, the one who believes in the Son of God has this, has this testimony within him. Mark 5.19, what Jesus said, Now go home and tell your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. I've shared my testimony a couple times just to people, not to a large crowd like this. And it seems like the every, every time I do it, the easier it gets. I'm going to share part of my story today. I'm going to probably tell you things that you don't know. I'll probably even tell you things that my family doesn't know. I'm going to open myself up and I'm going to share my story. I was born in 1976. I won't tell you which month or day because then you'll know when my birthday is. I already told you how old I was. I was born in Steinbeck on a beautiful warm day, as my dad always said. He said the water was running down the streets in Steinbeck. It was uh, a beautiful February day. <laughs> I lived there till I was about five years old. Uh, my dad was a, in construction. He was a contractor. He built houses. He built barns and so forth. So I, we lived there till I was about five years old. In 1981, we moved to a dairy farm. And let me tell you, anybody who hasn't grown up on a farm, farm life is an awesome experience. Um, my dad wasn't gone from work anymore. He was at home. He was on the field, wherever. It, it was a good experience. I really enjoyed it. I went to school in Vida for 13 years. In school, I got to meet my high school sweetheart. And I got to marry her. After that, I worked as a mechanic for several years, and I really enjoyed working with my hands. Um, I was never a kind of guy who, in school, liked to, um, you know, sit in the library, read books, do lots of studying. I like to do things with my hands, and that's still true today. I like working with my hands. We had the opportunity to own our own shop. Uh, it was a mechanic shop and a welding shop, and again. Working with my hands was the thing I loved to do. It was about um, 15 years ago or so, I, I always had a desire within me to get into emergency services. So when we lived in Vida in 2002, um, I joined the fire department there. It was the spring of 2002. Uh, we did over 20 calls in the first week that I was on. And if you know that corner of the country, um, any Ukrainian with a book of matches, and the rest is history. <laughs> so we did a lot, a lot of grass fires. I know the back swamps of Arbaca, Caliento, and so forth. In uh, 2003, I had the opportunity to take some paramedic training. Uh, 2003... That was the fall of 2003. I did that throughout the winter, and I've loved it ever since. October 2004, I got my license from the province of Manitoba as a paramedic. And back then, we had to do a written exam and a practical exam, and it was uh, evaluated by proctors by, uh, in uh, the office, the Manitoba Health Office in Winnipeg. For two years, we can, I continued to work in the shop, Monday to Friday and Saturdays, and I did about two to 300 on-call hours, which was evenings, weekends, per month. February 2006, we lost the shop. We closed the doors to un unpleasant circumstances. I, took, I had the opportunity to take some upgrades, some weekend courses, evening courses, and many study hours. And I got a full-time position as a regional float working for South, Southern, it was Southeastern Health then, today it's Southern Health. That was June 22, 2006. Not every day was a great day, but the good still outweighed the bad. 
I've always been asked this question, how do you do it? You must see all kinds of things. You must deal with the worst of the worst. I have an answer for you. I'm able to do what I do because I truly believe it's a calling. When we had just moved to the farm when I was five years old, my sister, she fell. We were building a new barn at the time. She fell. She split her head wide open. She had, uh, she was carrying a paint can and then she fell, tripped, and it cut her forehead open. My mom drove and I took care of her, holding the cloth to her forehead and consoling her as mom drove. Years later, my sister was married and fell and broke her ankle at her house. I jumped in the car, picked her up, and drove her to the hospital. When I got there, the nurse looked at me and said, you should be a paramedic, thinking nothing of it. A while later, my dad hurt his back and was unable to get out of bed in the morning. He called me and my brothers. We went and we carried him to the car, brought him to the hospital, and again, a different nurse said, you should be a paramedic. God puts people in our lives for a reason. I also believe that God gives me strength to do it. The Bible says in Isaiah, He gives strength to the weak. Trust me, some days I feel very weak. Isaiah 41, Fear not, I am with, fear not for I am with you. Exodus 15, The Lord is my strength. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things who strengthens me. And we can find passage after passage where God gives strength when we ask for it. David sought for strength in the Bible when, he was going to, when they were going to stone him, 1 Samuel 30. Paul asked for strength to proclaim to the Gentiles in 2 Timothy 4. Joshua commands the Israels, Israelites to be strong and courageous in Joshua 1. And so on. And then there's people. I believe I can do my job because of you guys. It doesn't matter how many times I talk to Teeny Voss. She always says, I don't know how you do it, but I pray for you so you can. Thank you for that. I have a brother-in-law. Every time he sees the ambulance, hears a siren, he prays for me and my partners. Thank you. And then I have family. I have an amazing family that pray and support me. Pray for me and support me. My wife and kids know that there are some days when I come home and I just want to be left alone due to the things I had to deal with at work. Some days I come home and I hug my kids thanking God they're still with us. Because during my last shift, there was a child, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't save. Coming out of paramedic school, I was pretty naive, or cocky, as some people would say it. I thought I knew it all. That only lasted about six months. I was on my way to an evening class. It was a rainy spring day. And on the way, I came across a head-on collision. It had just happened. In the middle of the highway were two cars, unrecognizable. I ran past the first car. I ran past debris. I ran to the second car where I heard screams. I found a woman. She had multiple broken bones and was in a lot of pain. 
Beside her was a lifeless body. Behind her was another. I ran to the other car and I found nobody inside. Only to find that the debris that I thought I ran by before was the remains of the other guy. That moment, that day, I realized there was no way I could do this on my own. I learned a valuable lesson that day. Trust God for strength. Take encouragement from others, including co-workers, family, and friends. In school, I was taught to intubate patients, do CPR, shock if needed, straighten a limb, and stabilize it. Pick up an elderly woman who had slipped on the ice and broke her hip. Treat a young child who had just had a seizure or was still seizing when I got there. Administer meds. Memorize hundreds of formulas. Draw up the right drug and the right amount. And the list goes on. But I was never taught what it feels like to watch a patient take their last breath. I was never taught what it feels like to be verbally and physically abused by a patient whom I'm trying to help. I was never taught how to get the sound of someone's screams out of my head at night after I untwisted their mangled leg and restored circulation to their foot. I was never taught the feeling of finding a friend at the emergency whose baby had just been rushed in, not breathing. I was never taught how it felt to clean up that much blood on my ambulance floor. I was never taught how to hold an Alzheimer's patient, Alzheimer patient's hand and explain to them over and over again how the nursing home is their home. <clears throat> I was never taught how to feel when you get called to a car crash to care for an injured child after her father put her and the entire family in the car and tried to drive home drunk in the middle of the night. I was never taught how to pluck a three-year-old out of the water only to wait another ten hours to hug my own three-year-old and say, I love you. I was never taught how it would feel to arrive at someone's house to share the worst day of their life. Nobody calls 911 because they're sharing good news or sharing the joy of their day. I was never taught how to feel when getting dispatched March 9th, 2012, 1910, to head on crash. Arriving on scene to find my parents and my brother in one of the cars. There's no course, there's no book. There's no university degree that would have prepared me for the way I felt those days. But it's the encouragements from you, strength from God, and the prayers you guys pray that helped me through those days. And for that I say thank you. I can share story after story how God's been there. Time doesn't allow. Our house is always open. And I have a listening ear 
if you want to share your story with me. Our story is made to share. Most of all, it's made to share what God has done in our lives and what he's done for you. Encourage others with your story. I hope today that I've encouraged you with my story. Like I said, I have story after story that I can share, but time will not allow. I'm going to ask the praise and worship team to come up. I want to share one more story with you guys. The story happened just a little while ago. Do you guys remember on the news the uh, story of the burning car at the 311 and 12 corner, the Niverville corner, and how they interviewed the person that uh, went there to save or pull that car, out of that, or the person out of that burning car? What's a life worth to you guys? For this person, that person's the person in the car, the person rescuing thought that the person in the car's life was worth their own life and did whatever it took to get that person out of the car. What's a soul worth to you guys? Is someone's soul worth that much to you guys that you're going to risk life, your own life, to save someone's soul? Share your story, guys. We're called to reach those souls that are lost. We're going to open the altar this morning. If you guys have a need out there, you guys have a want, God wants the desires of your hearts. We're going to sing some songs, worship team with the worship team. Prayer team is going to come up. We're also doing communion today, guys. Maybe there's somebody out there that you just need to talk to. Maybe there's somebody that has been heavy on your hearts and you haven't talked to them in a while. And you need to make things right. Maybe you need to make a phone call this morning. Maybe you need to go visit them. Stand with these you sing. The prayer team can come up. Yeah. 
Lord this morning. Thank you for the strength you give and just no matter what our situation is, you are there. You're there for us. And we can call out to you anytime, Lord. We just thank you for that. And God, this morning, we've come expecting. We want to meet you here, Lord. And during this time, I pray that you would meet us right where we're at. And Lord, if um, I just pray for you would give us boldness to come and ask, Lord, because you want to do the healing. You want to do the miracles. We just need to ask in faith and in your will. So I just thank you for this time and uh, just for your presence here, God. To the river I am going cannot bear. Come and cleanse me. Come forgive me. Lord, I need to meet you there. In these waters, healing mercy flows with from despair, I am going to the river, Lord, I need to meet you there. Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender. Please go. 
Thank you.